Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osayomi Sally, and today Jennifer and I are in studio. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. How was your weekend? How's the week starting off for you? I'm excited of good. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually excited of good. My weekend was also good. Awesome. I'm actually happy about that. Right? Because I mean, throughout last week, I was waking up with this um, migraine. Yeah. It refused to go for a whole week. Mm. But I'm glad that it has, it has reduced. Mm. So, but I'm going for a test tomorrow just, just, just to, to be, be sure. sure. right? Mm -hmm. So I've had a very, very rough week. Like, and yesterday was just interesting. I was at my office till like 1 a.m. or something. Wow. <laughs> and I walked with the walk. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. So this morning, my body gave up on me. Like, I was going to get up, but I was not getting up. <laughs> so you slept in? I tried, but even the sleep was not, it was just half an hour. Half because hour. I had, I had to wake up at 5 a.m. to do some things. I slept at 2.30. Mm -hmm. I had to wake up at 5 to do some things. Then um, I didn't finish until like 6.30, 7. I had to go back to just to try to manage to sleep a bit. Yeah. My body was just, and you know, once it's morning like that, my mind is alert, mm. so I don't know how I can sleep when work needs, when to, work be needs to be done. I feel so it's just when I get home today, I'm just going to sleep. Like you deserve. I need to <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I can see. But yesterday it was fun. I went to um, BJ Sachs um, concert. I think mm. that's my first time attending his concert. A friend of mine, or two friends of mine rather, invited me, and I was really happy that I went. Then I also visited the Cookathon. Mm, Hilda's but, cookathon. Yeah, by Hilda. So, I mean, we're going to talk more on that <laughs> because our guest unfortunately cancelled. We can't find our guest. So, we're going to just quickly, you know, I, you know, I always find an angle that we can talk about. So, I'm going to talk about that cookathon later. But Adela has joined us via Zoom. Um, Adela, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. How are you guys doing? Great, 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 great. So how was you? Get some you want to share how nice how your please. how your day started? Oh, so my day started good because of the rain. Of course, I expected that there'll be traffic and all that, and I wasn't disappointed, you know. Uh, and then he ended. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I think today for me has just been a day that I am reminded of small mercies mm -hmm. and I am reminded of um, how important it is to have um, just the you know just the gift of good support and um, this is a shout out big time to Omolala I mean she she really just said some really great words to me and it just made everything just seem a little bit easier today so yes I'm grateful for that and um I'm grateful that he ended the way it has, you know, it has ended, kind of. Yes, definitely grateful for that. The awesome. weekend was good. I mean, it was a spiritual weekend for me. It was really, really good. Nice. Really good. Really good. All right, so as you already know, it's our Monday, and Mondays we try to bring um, some kind of awareness and sensitization. And, of course, this is in partnership with Enough is Enough. Thanks um, to Yemi Adamolek and the entire team always providing us with different, um, what's it called, um, uh, what's it called, um, information that would take us to the next level. So in 2015, right, the All Progressive Congress, um, APC, sought Nigerians, um, Nigerians' votes through candidacy of President Muhammad Buhari with several campaign promises made under the umbrella of change and then um, next level. Eight years of his tenure becomes a wrap in about 14 days from today, right? Using <laughs> APC's um, campaign as a yastic, has Nigeria experienced the change um, that was promised, right? Um, as you already know, um, Enough is Enough is doing this with us and we really want to look at the pages of President Muhammad Buhari's card um, and um, of course um, here's what we found I think um, Diola I'll come to you first his okay. scorecard yes go ahead oh okay okay so let's start with um, economy you know his scorecard 
on economy. Um, so um, part of his campaign promise was to provide, was to create 20,000 jobs per state each year. Well, the sad truth is there is no public record to show that 20,000 jobs were created per state each year for the period of these eight years. Um, let's also look at um, another campaign promise, which is um, teach new skills to graduate and give them loans to start businesses by 2019. So this is what the central bank has to say. They said that um, they announced new loans for university and polytechnic graduates who are willing to set up businesses, saying the move is part of its efforts to fight rising unemployment in the country. So this has been partly done. The um, third thing we're going to look at is security. Buhari's call card, President Buhari's call card. Um, the, the kidnapped Chibok girls, girls was a very, very, it was a key part of his campaign promise. And um, we can say that out of 276 kidnapped Chibok girls, 89 of those girls are still in captivity. So this is partly done. Bring an end to insecurity in Nigeria. Of course, a lot of us thought, um, haven't been um, with his military experience and all that, um, we would be able to gain serious mileage in terms of um, ending insecurity. Unfortunately, kidnappings, gruesome killings, and unrest are still happening in various states such as Abia, Berno, Bauchi, Taraba, Plateau, and the Niger Delta. So this campaign promise has not been fulfilled. Mm, absolutely. Um, in fact, talking about Chibo girls, you know, Chibo girls mm. is just even like a, a small fraction compared to the number of kidnapped school children, right? I mean, there were the boys that were kidnapped, you know. So I, yeah. I mean, like, um, what exactly... Um, was the plan, was the structure. Um, we're talking about insecurity, kidnapping. It almost like tripled or quadrupled or something during this mm. tenure, right? I mean, like literally now you can't really just go anywhere. You are really afraid for the fact that, I mean, you're driving maybe a decent car, you can just be kidnapped. I yeah. mean, on Lekki mm. Express where people have been kidnapped, on Freedom where people have been kidnapped. Mm -hmm you know, and mm -hmm. taking to the nearest ex um, ATM for ransom and all of that. So a lot is really going on, you know, in terms of insecurity. Yeah. And I really don't know how the new mantra, hope, right, the new president-elect and, I mean, if he's sworn into office, you know, how he's going to tackle um, insecurity in this country. Mm -hmm. But let me hear your thoughts, um, Jennifer. What are your scorecards all right so the fourth thing on his scorecard is corruption and under that he had said the public declaration of assets and liabilities president muhammad muhammad buari is yet to release the full report of his assets declaration to the public and that has not been completed it hasn't been done at all then he also said that he would earn immunity from prosecution for elected officers in a criminal case now, for this, the government has failed to remove immunity from criminal prosecution or any kind of immunity whatsoever. That hasn't been done. Then the fifth thing under his scorecard is health and gender equality. The first under that for health is the government officials won't go abroad for medical treatment. President, Moha, President Buhari is currently undergoing dental care in London. <laughs> that has not been done. Mm. Then under gender equality... He had mentioned that they will give women at least 35% of top government positions. There are seven female ministers out of 43 in President Muhammadu Buhari's cabinet, and that hasn't been done either. Very sad. So, I mean, although it's too late for these promises to be fulfilled before May 29th, yeah. um, we call on President Muhammadu Buhari to at least fulfill his promise to... Um, bringing back the Chibok girls and ensuring that they are all released before his tenure. If he's unable to do this, at least tell us what the status of the remaining girls in captivity, yeah. right? What is the status of the remaining girls in captivity? All right, so for more information, mm. you can always, you know, go to um, the Office of the Citizens um, chat box, um, powered by Enough is Enough. That's the number to call is 01700 6381. 
right? Just say hello via WhatsApp. You can know your elected officials, your governors, senators, House of Rep members, House of Assembly members, local government chairmen, and councillors. I mean, this is very important, right? If we say we want to demand better governance, I think we should get to that point where we're really interested in who our leaders are, not just the prominent ones like the presidents, the governors, right? Let's get it down to the local government chairmen and councillors so we can then start to demand good governance at all cadres, right? Um, so um, thank you again to Enough is Enough for this partnership. Um, we, we love our Mondays because now we are able to come bearing gifts, right? Telling you the facts and all of that. So thank you again, Enough is Enough. All right, so it's no news that Hilda Bachi, um, popular, uh, that's, that's a popular name, Hilda Bachi has broken the um, Guinness World Record. I mean, she did this today um, across um, all our social media handles. Everyone followed her, you know, and all of that. And this was brought forth by the power um, of vision, right? And in that light, we are um, going to be discussing the topic Nigeria and the cost of lack of vision. You know, I told you, I said I always find an angle because you see, it's <laughs> one thing for everybody to be celebrating this young girl, yeah. the president, I mean, the uh, president elect, the vice president, the uh, um, APC, I mean, sorry, the Labour Party presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, the PDP, everybody that is anybody celebrated this girl. But you see, it came, it came to life because yeah. this girl had a vision, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and, and it, it just tells us that for me, when I see Nigeria, I think the biggest problem we have in the country is lack of vision, right? And um, because we lack vision, that's why we are not even finding anything like we can hold on to say these are milestones of success. And here's what we found as today's quote. It says, create a vision for the life you really want, and then work relentlessly towards making it a reality. And as you can tell from Ilda Bachi's um, story, who, by the way, clocked 100 hours. Ha! That lady, <laughs> she's on fire. Like, she clocked 100 hours. We're going to talk more about her because, again, she's an inspiration to many. But, you see, beyond just hitting that record, there was something that led to the success. And that's why, if you understand the process, then it is easy to replicate success. We want to discuss mm -hmm. how this our lack of vision is impacting us as a people. I told you I will find an angle for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll take a break. When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. You are still watching Ways Now. Today is International Day of Families, right? And it's celebrated on May 15th to raise awareness of the importance of families and their role in the society. Now, the day focuses on the important um, role that families play in our society while also highlighting the issues faced by them. The International Day of Families is a global observance that is celebrated by countries around the world. Ah, this is a powerful day. It's a powerful day because uh, family, you know, it's not just a cliche when they say family is the bedrock of the society. Family truly are the ones that are the very fabric of the society. So yeah. you see a society or a, 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 a community or whatever that is failing or a nation, check the family, the family structure yeah. and um, mm -hmm. i'm telling you that um, if we can start to to heal from those smallest units which is the family a lot of the problems that we have today we will not even have it um, anybody that has a fantastic support structure from family you would always see those people blossom mm. it's i mean you can't you hardly find somebody that has a community support like like family like support family, yeah. um go astray do all the you know or be involved in any kinds of you know vices and all of that they are always grounded people so mm -hmm. very important that we protect the fabric of the family so what's your thoughts on family's day hmm. <laughs> i didn't know today was family's day it actually really struck me just now because um i reached out to my aunt today I haven't spoken to her in a long while, and I grew up with her. She's actually my favorite aunt. And something just told me, reach out to her. I think I messaged her, that was um, yesterday or early this morning. 
But I got very busy. Then I remind, I just remembered, oh, she actually sent me a message saying she was in Lagos. Mm. So I checked it. I'm like, oh, you're in Lagos. I hope I get to see you because I'm supposed to travel for a very hour next week. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she said, oh, yeah, that she's around. And then she just mentioned something. She said, I can't wait for us to be one big happy family again. Aww. And it really struck me because we haven't spoken in a while. Wow. It's been a long time. Oh, we just get feels, busy. Yeah. So it just feels like we're going to reconnect again. And I'm really excited. Aww. I was already thinking, oh, what gifts should I give to her? <laughs> Oh, because so sweet. she's the best. If I said the best aunt ever in the entire world, Aww. she's amazing. She's amazing. Auntie, so I can't we wait love to see you. Her. We love you. We love you. By extension, we love you. <laughs> Even though we've not met you. But Diola, tell us your story on family quickly. Yeah. Okay, so for me, I think um, when I count my blessings, I count my family like uh, multiple times over. Um, I'm blessed. That's, that's all I can say. I'm just blessed. I talk to my family every day. And um, my family, is, um, you know, they're a big part of who I am today. So I am grateful for that. And um, I'm hoping that um, somehow, again, um, some of us are not so, so fortunate to have um, biological families. But we can get to choose our families. And um, when we choose our families, it's important to remember that you have to give in into you have to you have to pour into family so they can pour into you. You can't keep taking, taking, taking. Family only thrives when everybody does their part. You mm. give, you take, you give, you take, you give, you take. So yes, I mean I celebrate this day and um, I hope that we're able to build stronger families. Absolutely. All right, so let's quickly run through what we found in the news. Um, Jennifer, I'll come to you first. Okay, so in the news, Nigerians dig up old video of singer Shewun Kuti bragging about or slapping police officers. And according to um, Ben Day, he said that, um, that the Afrobeat musician Shewun Kuti in the early hours of today turned himself in at the Lagos State Police Command Headquarters, Ikeja, in company of his lawyer and family representative, and he has been placed under arrest. He also said that in line with the law, the command appreciates the public for their concern and assures that the ongoing investigation will be detailed, transparent, professionally pursued, and justice will be manifestly served to all parties involved. Hmm. Mm. I saw the mob <laughs> shots, the pictures that he took uh, with the cuffs and, you know, the background. First of all, I see police people waiting. <laughs> when I know people find a way to do a proper mock proper shot, motion. you know. Um, but <laughs> hey, um, putting him in cuffs without his shoes and all of that. Um, so the, I, I, I watched the video. I don't know the full story, mm. right? Um, but whatever it is, I just want to appeal to people that, see, Lagos, a lot of things that happen in this is actually targeted at bringing out the, the madness in everybody, yeah. right? I remember driving on Lake, Lake, Lake Expressway and one very, very horrible driver decided that he wanted to go at me, took something very sharp mm. and smashed my windscreen, right? Mm -mm. But I kept my cool because I just kept on thinking in my head, if I engage this kind of a person, what happens? Yeah. At the end of the day, me, I hate scars, I hate all these things. For him to be able to do that, what, what happens? Yeah. This kind of person is not rational. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And don't forget that a lot of people are high on substance and yeah. all of that. So, I mean, no matter what the, the, the um, gravity of the situation is, please keep your calm. The only, um, what's it called, gratitude I have is that the policeman was not armed. Yeah. Because, again, imagine if he was armed. Would not be talking about anything, mm -hmm. right? He said he put him on harm's way or he tried to, I mean, his life was at risk. I saw a dent in his car, so I'm not sure what exactly caused That's it, happened, right? Yeah. So we'll just probably keep quiet and wait till we hear the full story. story. But I just want to appeal to people keep calm, right? No matter the situation, it's not worth it because at the end of the day, you lose your cool. Everybody gets, you know, so it, it doesn't like I cannot imagine myself now going to say I want to go and start, start starting one police case inside the this. Thing. Oh, I would rather long. be, you yeah. know, be the be the momo and just be quiet, right? No matter how agitated mm. I am, yeah. I would rather just get get be quiet and probably call super, his superior and say, yeah. see what your police officer has done, take pictures, evidence, mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of that, and let it go. But now this one that you are angry, of course, the, even the guy we saw that the guy was maybe on the wrong side, the policeman. 
But now your anger now has now further complicated the issue. Yeah. You know, so that's why I just appeal to anybody, be calm. It's not worth it because I me, you. I don't even have the energy. Say I won't go sleep for one police. Ah, must, ah. Because I honestly, these there. things can just go sideways. You know, like you are really laughing. Know. You you enter police police uh, <laughs> matter today too. Now. You understand what I'm saying? I don't even want to go into that drama. But go ahead, Yola. Let's hear your story as well. Um, okay, so um, this is um, court order school to pay teacher two million naira for unlawful dismissal. Um, the National Industrial Court has ordered the school Trinity Model Academy to pay its former staff member, Mrs. Um, I mean, two million for psychological trauma which resulted from unlawful termination of her employment. Okay, so um, without reading the story, um, apparently um, the school fired the teacher for alleged gross misconduct, which when they got into court, it could not be substantiated. The school alleged that, um, well, the, the teacher was still under, um, was not confirmed yet. So they felt they didn't have to go through the, um, the due process you know, protocol of um, querying and then giving warnings before, you know, terminating our appointment. Well, the court did allege that um, um, given the, the contract of the school, that it was just um, going to be a probation for a period of time. It had exceeded that time. And um, whether she was confirmed or not, well, that's, um, that's the mistake of the school. But at that point, they could not, since they could not substantiate, you know, the gross misconduct, then they had no right to unlawfully terminate her, which would have resulted um, in um, in her, you know, finding it difficult to get another teaching job. Anyway, for me, I, I, I don't know. I think I'm just um, happy that um, for, for once, I mean, this is not a regular thing. This is a very rare occurrence where... Um, you know, the court actually um, wades in on this and then someone actually takes the school or someone actually sues an employer for wrongful termination and then the person gets a good verdict. So I don't know, I, I think it's bravo for the um, for the teacher and um, personally I am wishing her, you know, good fortune while she hunts for another job. I think so the employment the challenge with this Nigeria now is that, be... you see, Nigeria is such an unforgiving um, place. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Because absolutely. now, people would not see this as a woman just fighting for her rights. They will see it as somebody that is too headstrong. Yeah. It's like it's almost a taboo for you to exactly. demand for your rights. Yeah. It's almost a taboo for you to demand for what is fair. To defend it's almost yourself. The, yeah, it's yeah. a taboo for you to demand for what is just. Mm. You said you're all too much. You know, that's what you hear. You know, so now it's almost like being blacklisted. Mm. You know, I would just advise her if you can look for um, remote jobs or something because I look for a different yeah. Yeah. a different job entirely. Because yeah. now the, yeah. the schools yeah. can yeah. easily blacklist yeah. you. And that's, you know, mm. that would be terrible. You're so right. Okay. Go ahead. You're so right. You're so right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So my story is actually a bit of a sensitive one, I, and I thought to bring it out here today because, again, maybe it's still fresh, and they can pull out the video. But I don't want them to play too long. I think I will try to. <laughs> okay, Jola is here to help me break down the Yoruba. But if they can play the video, then I'll come back to the story. His wife, his children, the bereaved. My prayer goes to them. Uh, I want to quickly say something. I just think I should talk about it. Maybe this video will get to the appropriate channels and people will make amendments. I just told you alone. Tabaso pe yoku. I am a big picture of one vulnerable state. Sita mo. Kode kisha mwara talu man shekini ye. Is it a yite sumo lobe? E yi te e wambe e nba to ku. A be yi ti won sa re kpe. Pe nko she le si. E yi le man she ki ni nye. Ta ba mo kata ma fi fo nu wa she mo. E je ka lo so si bo. Hmm. So I, I, I kind of like understood based on the caption at the top. Mm. Because I remember, mm. I remember that big brother guy that passed on. Rico. Mm. You remember mm. that at even 
on his um, at the hospital on the floor. They had brought out some pictures yeah, yeah. of him. So, yeah. I, I mean, what she's saying, if I understood what um, she said in Yoruba, if I understand it clearly, she was saying that, you know, when people are diseased, they would have called you, for instance, as a close family friend. That, I mean, that it is unfair that you now take pictures at their vulnerable, vulnerable states. states yeah. Do you understand? And start to actually, post it online. It's actually very wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? It's in an age, yeah, it, it's very wrong. I, and I, I think I need people to understand this. It's not everything that you put on social media. It's not everything. Like, really, we, we need to know where to draw the line. Yeah. Right? Somebody is in... in um, or, or somebody just died. The next thing you're thinking is taking a picture for you to be the first to say... Uh, you know, like I was you want there, to, yeah, I was there or yeah, whatever. Like it doesn't, person. it doesn't make any sense. Um, please, because I mean, the phones are not meant to control us. We are meant to control the phone. Yeah. And you actually have the power to to know what to click and what not to click. Like somebody is, you know, undergoing an operation or something. You take if the person is the one doing it themselves. Themselves. Like they're the ones taking their pictures and all of mm -hmm. that. I mean, you are called up. It's it's a private thing. And don't forget that this particular actor that died, um, the Cookathon overshadowed it because nobody was even really talking about it. I remember going on Iago Joe's live while she was at um, the Cookathon at Amore Gardens. And somebody kept on saying that, can you imagine she's here celebrating? And some people came in at defense to say that she's, she might not be aware that the man had passed. Mm. Right? So, I mean, these are things that when it comes to issues of death, is very sensitive. So, if you are the one that is closest to the family members, because we're talking international family day, yeah. they consider you as family. Would it be right, would it be okay for you to then now go there and start to take pictures? I don't know who, what the story, I really don't want to know what the drama is about behind the scenes because she was actually addressing some people because she says she hope it gets to the right channel. But I'm saying that, please, for decorum, I mean, um, consideration and all of that, when there are issues like this, that's not the time for us to start to do, you know, some kind of like mm -hmm. very, very, it's inappropriate. Let's just stop it. Is. It is. I actually mm -hmm. I agree with her. It is. Absolutely. All right. So let's take a break. Let's talk vision and let us celebrate our own Nigerian. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 